On the 30th of May, the church celebrates Josephine Butler, a devoted Christian and a brave social reformer. Josephine Gray was born in 1828 in Millfield, Northumberland. Her father, John Gray, was a cousin of Earl Gray, the British Prime Minister from 1830 to 1834, whose monument is now familiar to us all at the top of Gray Street in Newcastle. Josephine's father, John, was a prominent supporter in Northern England of his cousin's political work for social reform, which included the abolition of slavery, reforms in the poor law, and the extension of the right to vote in the Reform Act of 1832. John also brought up his three sons and four daughters to respect each other equally, regardless of gender. Josephine therefore grew up in a culture of fairly conventional Christian piety and of commitment to social justice and equal respect. She married George Butler, an academic teaching classics and eventually a clergyman. Theirs was an extremely happy and mutually supportive marriage. But, alongside her husband's support, Josephine's own life was one of individual Christian faith and personal courage. From her mid-teens, she was committed massively to the service of Christ in the world and through prayer. And this commitment became braver throughout adulthood as she suffered repeated episodes of ill health and also sometimes of depression. But also, in 1864, when Josephine was 30, a family tragedy brought her nearly to despair. Her fourth child and only daughter, Eva, aged five, fell 40 feet from an upstairs banister and died three hours later. The grief lasted throughout Josephine's life. But in due course, she channeled her grief into lifelong service. Mainly, though not exclusively, she campaigned on behalf of women. She helped found schools and a Cambridge College for women. She campaigned, unsuccessfully of course, for women to have the vote. She was part of a pressure group campaigning for what finally became the Married Women's Property Act of 1882, which began to allow married women to own money themselves, independently of their husbands. Her most committed work, though, was the most difficult for her as a respectable Victorian woman, and is still quite hard to talk about today in some circles. It began in her twenties when she and George lived in Oxford and she observed men, including men in the university, using prostitutes and regarding those women as worthless creatures to be used and cast aside. As they moved to different posts in Bristol and Cheltenham and Liverpool, Josephine's commitment to such women grew. She understood that they were driven by desperate need in a society where women without husbands or supportive families had few sources of income. She saw terrible need, and in some cases stepped in to provide for sick or dying women herself. She learned of girls being sold as so-called white slaves or child prostitutes, and in due course, after she had publicised the existence of such brothels, both in England and in Europe, in 1885, the British Parliament altered the legal age of sexual consent to thir from 13 to 16, where it remains. But Joseph's longest and hardest campaign was against the Contagious Diseases Acts, which were finally repealed after much hostility in Parliament in 1886. What were these Contagious Diseases Acts? To put it simply, this legislation assumed men were justified in using prostitutes, but that the women were sources of disease and must be controlled. Women suspected, just suspected, of prostitution were taken by police and subjected to utterly brutal 
physical examination. If disease was found, the women, or girls, were kept in an institution until supposedly cured and then sent out onto the streets. Even if not found to be diseased, their names were taken and publicised, meaning that other forms of employment were impossible. Addressing public meetings about this, as Josephine Butler did, took enormous courage, and opposition to her care for the women was frequent. After all, it was thought, the men must be protected. And of course, the women were immoral, weren't they? The story is a long one, with a Tory government refusing to change the law, but Gladstone's Liberal government finally doing so by 1886. By this time, George Butler was a canon of Winchester Cathedral, and he and Josephine had set up a hostel for former prostitutes near Winchester Cathedral. Josephine's campaigning life went on, and she continued to risk public outcry into her old age and widowhood. She died 16 years after George in 1906. She was, simply, convinced of the equal humanity before God of women and of children and of the poor, with that of men and the rich and powerful. In God's name, she fought bravely in a hostile world for their human equality. On her day, May the 30th, the church prays this collect. God of compassion and love, by whose grace your servant Josephine Butler followed in the way of your son in caring for those in need. Help us, like her, to work with strength for the restoration of all to the dignity and freedom of those created in your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.